Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to all of you to this meeting where we are presenting our new strategy, Go Beyond, uh, our uh, model of development for the next years to come. Let me tell you that in the recent days, weeks, we held a number of discussions about whether we should be presenting our strategy here and now. Let me remind you that we promised during our um, conferences that we were supposed to present the strategy in the first quarter, which was a promise uh, to the market by our management board. And thus, we came to the conclusion that uh, regardless of the situation, current situation, we were going according to the plan. And I must tell you that our strategy is to a large extent based on assumptions made before the breakout of the Ukraine war. Some have been modified since, some have remained unchanged. This is because we do not know, simply we don't know how things will develop, how they will end, what the impact of the war situation will be on the situation in Europe and Poland and on the economy. So, we are deeply convinced that our development uh, directions are right and correct and we're going to uh, carry them out, uh, but still we uh, reserve the right to modify some of our KPIs if the development of events will require that. Let me stress that at the very beginning of the war, we looked through our portfolio in terms of exposure on Russia, Belarus, and uh, Ukraine. And our partners who operate significantly in those markets or are clients with capital deriving from those areas. And the result of this verification is positive, uh, in our opinion. We have absolutely insignificant direct exposure and very limited indirect exposure to these three countries, to these three markets. We believe that this situation will not increase material costs of risk because clients exposed to those markets are strongly diversified companies and we are convinced that they will weather this situation untouched. For the last three weeks uh, um, plus a few days, we have been focusing on helping refugees, particularly those that are employees of our sister bank in, the, in Ukraine, Ukrosis Bank. And we are strongly involved emotionally, operationally, and uh, uh, otherwise, and we are convinced that it is our duty to be active, act as long as it is necessary. Let me add that from the very beginning of this war, we introduced a number of simplifications and operation processes for our Ukrainian clients. We waived most fees. We have simplified the process of opening current accounts for Ukrainians, and we have supported materially um, our Ukrainian employees who have been with us um, also before the breakout of the war. We all hope that this terrible conflict will end soon and it will end well for Europe and for the world. People will stop dying and Ukraine will remain a free democratic state. The bank is managed by a team, ladies and gentlemen. This is the team. It is not a single person situation, it's a team uh, game. Uh, and this is something I stress strongly very often. We uh, all as a team support the strategy we are about to present. Also, because we're a team, I'm only going to present the introduction to this and then colleagues will present um, subsequent uh, chunks of the strategy. We're presenting you with our mission. Mission we have worked out um, under our new culture with a number of employees of the bank. I believe that this mission is well stated. It reflects what we want to achieve, what we believe in, and how we're going to operate. We introduce positive banking into the lives of our uh, customers, replying to their financial needs and making their uh, achieving their goals easier in a simple, thought-through and safe way, caring about the society and the environment. 
A lot of this will be reflected uh, in our talking about this strategy. The plan for today is four blocks. We're going to talk about our current environment, about who we are. We'll have a look at the Go Beyond strategy and strategic initiatives that will make this strategy possible. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is changing in all dimensions and at many levels. We see trends such as e-commerce, digitization, um, sharing economy, cybersecurity, new ways of work strengthened by the pandemic, jobs that are um, he, uh, that are here now but will uh, um, disappear in the future, aging uh, society, growing wealth of an aging society, etc. We see these trends. We try to be ahead of them. We try to be proactive and provide solutions to our customers that are um, within the framework of these trends and even ahead of these. And this is the motive of this strategy and our way of operating now and in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, the climate, the global warming is a fact. I think it's clear to everybody. We've seen changes in Poland. Those of my age remember negative 20 uh, centigrade in the winter. We, we're not seeing that anymore. We have tropical summers instead. ESG activities uh, will be forced upon us by our clients, our customers, customers who are ever more aware and declare an ever-growing readiness to buy products and services of those producers that are climate responsible, who care for the environment, for whom it's one of the most important key strategic factors and not only limited to CSR. We are a front runner in terms of sustainable development. We have done a lot in this department and we're going to do even more. Let me remind you that for a number of years we are not um, funding uh, coal, uh, dirty um, uh, economy uh, or uh, fair animal uh, production. We fund instead passionately renew renewable energy projects, smaller and bigger ones, including those allowing presumers to install photovoltaic panels on their rooftops. And we're going to do m more of this. Remember that ESG is not only about the environment, it's also about the society and corporate governance standards of behavior, and this is fundamental and very important to us. Macroeconomics. Michal de Boa is here, our chief economist, who will join the team during the Q&A session. I might be taking away from him, but I want to tell that the changeability and uncertainty of times ahead make it very difficult to uh, forecast the years to come. So we have defined a, defined a number of uh, scenarios. The basic one created before the breakout of the war, a very positive one and less positive. We don't know which way our economy is going to be headed. We don't know about inflation and interest rates, although we assume they will grow. In any case, we believe that the Polish economy will be dynamic enough and resilient enough for Poland to remain on the growth path, although that growth might be lower than we formerly assumed. This shows you a more in-depth analysis of impact of um, individual factors on the economy. I'm not going to go through this in detail. Let me just uh, draw your attention to the fact that most arrows are red and that symbolizes negative impact on the economy and inflation. But there's a number of green elements as well. Time will tell which forces will be dominant and how the um, situation will be shaped for the economy in Poland and in the world. A lot depends on when the war finishes and how it ends, how 
and to what extent uh, economies and countries are going to support one another. Challenges for the banking sector, ladies and gentlemen. These are two main ones, but there are more, of course. One is changeability and uncertainty. The mm, change in everything is the only anchor, the only sure thing ahead of us. The pandemic we have not mentioned yet so far, etc. What banks have to do, what leaders have to do in banks is adapt swiftly and flexibly to these changes in the environment around us, make bold decisions fast. There is no other solution. Acting according to a long-term plan that is not corrected along the way will not be successful. The other challenge is uh, foreign currency mortgage loans, of course, above all in CHF. This is the so-called legacy problem, which is still uh, in the sector. We are also part of that challenge. It burdens uh, the balance sheets of the banks uh, through um, legal risk uh, uh, provisions. And this is something we have to deal with, and, um, with for a number of years still. But we hope that this will stop being the dominant problem in the years to come. But we need to manage this challenge and be aware that the impact of Swiss franc um, mortgage loans will stay here for some time. What banks have to do is increase efficiency, digitize, look for optimization um, economies, um, use cloud computing, look for new business models, including subscription-based model, we don't need to own to use, to be able to use. Uh, so car rental, long-term car rental um, is increasing. You don't have to spend the whole amount uh, to use a car. You can make monthly payments. Last year, we launched a uh, mobile phone rental program, and this proves that innovative thinking and new business models make the bank look for new sources of revenue, and this is something we're going to continue on. Beyond banking is one of the elements we're going to work on intensely in the years to come. Branches. I've been saying for a number of years, and let me repeat that again, that I am not a believer in branches disappearing in the recent years to come, but I do believe that they will be transformed, their role will change, and they will shift from traditional places where you can cash a check, uh, pay out cash, etc. They will become places of advisory where clients or customers come for high quality uh, advisory by an expert in their crucial financial uh, decisions to talk with uh, competent specialists. Who are we? BNP Paribas Group, we are part of it. This is our leading strategic shareholder, the biggest banking group in Europe and one of the biggest in the world. Looking at uh, the assets, you will see it's uh, over 2,600 billion euros. It's profitable with high revenue uh, on equity, return on equity with two year, 200 years of history. I am proud of this parent company that I know will support us whenever we might need that in terms of business and solutions. It supports us on an ongoing manner. Of course, today we are talking about the bank and our subsidiaries above all. This is the strategy of BNP Paribas Bank Poland. But remember that within the group there is a number of specialized subsidiaries, companies that allow us to offer all kinds of services under one logo, under one roof. It's a comprehensive package. It's hard to think of a service, of a product that we cannot deliver uh, under the uh, BNP Paribas umbrella. How did we change, ladies and gentlemen? How have we changed? In 2017, we were a middle-sized bank. 
Still, completing the integration between BNP Paribas, the old BNP Paribas with Begeret. Now, three, four years on, we are a big bank. We are sixth in terms of size, in terms of balance uh, in Poland, and we have improved our a number of our business parameters. We have acquired many clients. We are much more digitized, which is reflected in the dynamic of uh, the users of our mobile application. We are an important player in the market that has built its scale as a result of a series of mergers and acquisitions growing organically. Our strategy Go Beyond is about development, about further moving on under the model of organic growth. Our business model is strongly diversified. As you know, we are univer a universal bank. We work with all the sectors and all the client segments, starting with retail and small companies, wealth management, where we are number one in the market, we have SMEs, corporate clients, and the biggest corporations, Polish and international. Interestingly, which is not typical of big universal banks in Poland, as a share of our revenues, the institutional revenues is 50-50 with uh, retail banking and uh, small enterprises. This model makes us more resilient to asymmetrical shocks and uh, allows for growth and development in all areas. Under our strategy, we want to grow in all areas we are active in. And the dynamic of growth might uh, vary slightly, but there is growth potential, development potential in every segment, client segment, and every product group where we are present. Ladies and gentlemen, SDGs, as we call them, the Sustainable Development Goals, there are 17 of these. They were authored by the United Nations, a very important topic for us. For a long time, we have been carrying out this exercise under which we combine all we do with one or a number of SDGs. This is a series of examples of how we see it. In terms of sustainable financing, we have made significant progress. We have granted 6.6 .6 billion zlotys of loans, um, sustainable loans including 4 billion last year only. Uh, I talked about um, not financing uh, traditional coal, um, uh, electric uh, plants, power plants, and uh, this is because what we do is uh, for real. We have the courage to say, no, we're not going to do this. We can uh, waive the possible revenue because uh, values are more important for us. We care about the environment, and that's more important for us than maximization of short-term revenues. Our new culture. We started working on a new culture, on defining it last year. We involved many among our employees in this exercise, our colleagues. We worked together on defining our goal, our mission, which I read out to you, and define key values that we are guided by – transparency, courage, simplicity, cooperation and empowerment. These are values we live by, we are guided by, and which we bring up in our conversations, which guide our decision-making processes. They are the basis of uh, our behaviors, and we refer to them if we want to correct somebody else's behavior. We are strong believers, and I am a strong believer, and that only an organization based on strong uh, values as, their fo as its foundation has opportunities for growth, for gaining the trust of its clients, its uh, customers, and its employees.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've done a lot in the recent years. We are st a strong group in Poland in a number of year areas. We are the market leaders. I mentioned wealth management. We're definitely a leader in terms of agro. We are acquiring ever more clients. They are ever more eager to use our channels, digital channels, in corporate banking, CIV. We have uh, a very good model, integrated model for services to uh, the biggest companies. Companies, I think well, that we are a leader in terms of international uh, companies. In Poland, we have a modern system based on an internal branding go ecosystem ready for cloud computing uh, with uh, modern solutions to our clients. We are uh, very glad uh, with what we have already accomplished. Nevertheless, we stay modest and we remember of uh, what are the areas that we need to improve more. Um, we know how much work is still to be done for us to become a bank that we all can be taking pride in. We need to make our customer service ever more excellent. We have to boost our customer satisfaction. We have to be very active in the area of improving our our automation services uh, and streamlining internal processes. For the last three years, we have focused most on customer-related services. This is uh, where we've uh, um, had our investments in the first place. Now, other things need to be caught up with uh, under the umbrella of this renewed strategy. This is more than bound to happen. Our brand is not as broadly recognized uh, as we would wish for, uh, looking at at the corporate banking and given our track record, i.e. small bank, merging together to constitute a big one. Uh, our exposure is uh, pretty limited and we are going to be um, L, we're going to be elbowing our way through. And for technologies, we'll uh, have uh, to develop uh, many new things. Go beyond strategy now, ladies and gentlemen. Our strategy is to be represented by a tree. This doesn't come as a coincidence. Uh, this is uh, very much illustrative of positive banking to one end. We also trust it comes to illustrate three pillars of our strategy beginning from the roots. The together pillar. We focus on people. People are the most important uh, thing for us. There is no bank without its people, without their belief and their convictions. Therefore, we'll be taking a proper care of them by developing new models of work. We'll be agile in this respect. We have already employed a new reality of hybrid uh, working, and there is one more innovative solution to be uh, to be rolled out in one of our regions, and we need to take care, a set proper care of our people as they uh, count the most should people be engaged. And there will be also translated into the level of satisfaction on the part of our customers, which we hope holds especially dear. Now, going up, we've got this stronger pillar, and this is what we concentrate primarily on how to exploit and this robust international standing of the BNP Paribas Group to our benefit merged with uh, uh, newest technologies, merged with uh, streamlining our processes, etc. So that what we do, uh, what, what we do internally and externally vis-a-vis -vis our customers goes on seamlessly and smoothly and is widely appreciated. The up pillar and moving on upwards uh, towards uh, the crown of the tree. As said beforehand, this is our intent to grow further. We've got all it takes um, to be able to grow dynamically. We'd like to have a, uh, an excellent offer to all of our customers. We believe that we need to, to be present in multi-channels and uh, actually that's a decision to be taken by a client where they want to cooperate with us and this is for them to choose. So this experience is theirs to make. We'll be working on it, that's for sure. We'll be trying to uh, tailor-make accessible paths, accessible pathways for the customers will be acting in a transparent manner. And above all, uh, positive, the positive pillar. 
and it's something that I repeat all in all over again. We like to be decent as a bank. We like to be a bank where, where people say, yes, they've, uh, uh, they've been reliable, they've kept their promise, they've uh, taken proper care of the natural environment, they've been modern, but they've got also this human face. And this is precisely the kind of bank that we want to be and we want to become still. On this slide, please have a look at three our important KPIs. Above all, we are aiming at having ROE equivalent to around 12% in 2025. Secondly, thanks to our strategy, uh, we aim to have this relation between cost and revenues to be on par with uh, 48% in times embraced by the strategy. And the share of uh, sustainable funding in our portfolio will be at 10%. These KPIs are further elaborated on in our slides. Now, go beyond. Our competition winner that has been called amid our colleagues. This is something that we fancy a lot. We very much enjoy this strategy as it, uh, clear, uh, as it is clearly here to show that we go beyond uh, the traditional banking. We like to draw to the experiences of other worlds, of other universes. We are here to challenge status quo. And this is the kind of profile that we need to employ also within the very bank. Uh, we want to have our ideas. We want, we want to be there to challenge our superiors. This should be permitted. Hierarchy is of lesser importance. What's of major importance is to how much we contribute to the development of the um, of the entire bank. That's it from now for me. Uh, that's that's it for now for me and now. Over to you, dears. The together pillar. People matter the most. Uh, should we be looking at roots, um, history, tradition? This is all about robustness and also solid growth, and also something that uh, gives and a tree trying to grow. We are bold enough in taking our decisions. We aren't a potential for responsibility to be taken and not to be judged. Uh, we are keen to uh, learning our lessons so that we can become ever more excellent. Regardless of uh, how old we are, where we come from, whether or not we are people with disabilities, and this all creates a picture of us being inclusive and diversified. And of course, we are looking at this through the prism of knowledge, competences, and engagement. Our workplace is set to be flexible. It also aims to be cool for your personal growth as well as your professional growth. And this clearly also boosts the well-being among our employees. Volunteering campaigns have uh, proven recently uh, how uh, important it is, how uh, re relevant it has become. We also advocate for hybrid modalities of work. This clearly sets the entire scope of work here in the bank, here in, uh, uh, in the house, or remote connections are also possible. We uh, warrant flexible uh, working patterns depending on your business needs. And this is the manner in which we develop a business environment which is hugely supportive of growth of the competences of the future. Thus, transforming is more than embedded in our DNA. The same applies to going digital. Angel with skill and Dennis. The floor is yours. We want to execute our strategy thanks to an agile at scale operating model. These are the roots of our tree. But it is also a deep transformation we have been implementing since two years. Today, already, all the delivery activities of the bank are working under an agile at scale framework. 
It means it covers more or less everybody who was working before in the project mode. It represents more than 1,300 employees today. The problem I have is that agile is a buzzword overused. So let me be a bit specific in our case. The bank is organized now around 14 tribes. Each tribe is a big topic for us. Data, open banking, loans to individuals. And each tribe is organized in products. A product is one team. Business, IT, function together. The team, the product, has the full ownership of the product experience, of the processes end-to-end, -end, and the IT systems related to the product, both for the change and the run. It is important to understand that the main thing is that this product, this team, have the authority to decide, to act, to invest, and sometimes to disinvest. Our role as the management board is to connect the dot and drive the direction, defining only a few objectives. My message here is that Agile at BNP Paribas Polska is not a vague concept of cooperation. This is our formal organization from the 1st of January this year. When we launched this transformation, we wanted to go two times faster, better, and happier. This is happening. One example, the product current account in the tribe daily banking. The war in Ukraine started on the Thursday. On Monday morning, we were able to open current account to Ukrainian refugees thanks to a simplified process. In the recent context that we face, our conviction on empowerment is deeper. So we'll go for sure beyond our agile at scale setup that we have already. We do believe that power's concentration does not help to make the world better. We do believe that having the courage to empower makes our bank stronger. This is what we mean by cooperation. So time to open the next chapter, Stronger, and we'll give the voice to Magda. The stronger pillar means that we want to reinforce our cooperation with the PNP Paraga Group and we want to be very much about a dynamic development of technologies, which is going to happen through the uh, renewed IT at scale uh, technology and strategy. Why is that the case? Scalability is going to be our new currency, and this is to reply to the ambition of growth in the go beyond uh, uh, strategy. The actual heart of the strategy will be about platforms, making platforms. This is going to involve a, an in depth uh, transformation of our co banking system. Our gains, in the first place, our customers are going to have a better UX experience, better products for the customer in a faster manner. And this is also a foundation to have for open banking. Platform, uh, platforms are going to also be achieved through clouds, multi-cloud solutions, private and public clouds from a multiple vendors. This is not only about the computational power, this is also very much about modern services that we can purchase directly from the cloud. We are going to address this technological depth and we we are going to take care of the working environment for our colleagues so that it has gone digital. Scalability is very much also about partnerships. Partnerships and cooperation with our partners and startups. We'll have a modern API marketplace. We are pushing internal IT uh, teams, a culture where IT specialists uh, work and take pride in it. What about solutions for business, as this is going to be decided in the business tribes? For example, new internet banking for our corporate customers or true omni-channel for retail customers. There is an entire list of plans to be uh, coming into being in the years to come. Uh, how much will we invest in it? for? Uh, for this strategy, it's going to be 500 million slotties. 
for new solutions for business as well as clients. Here, we'll invest a billion PLNs. And I'm quite convinced that with these investments, our technological growth is going very much uh, to be supportive of Go Beyond Pillar in the stronger, uh, in the stronger pillar. Kazimierz Schwabno, now the floor is yours. Good morning. One of the conditions for the strategy is about optimization of key processes. This is the area which is approached in a very orderly manner, as we want to revamp all the processes of crucial importance from the perspective of clients. And there is a total of 38 processes, nine out of them is now being optimized and has been so since last, since last year. These processes have to be facilitated, have to be easier to trace, have to be more measurable, of course. Above all, we want to, to see these processes more client-friendly and employee-friendly. Those processes have already been kick-started. All the processes have been attached to uh, individual tribes, and this is not to say that tribes act unilaterally. We have teams, multi, uh, um, multidisciplinary teams, and uh, therefore we can uh, approach this topic in a comprehensive manner. Revamping processes also uh, entails a full revamp of the back office. We want to have three stages here. Stage number one is all about a, a united, unified front end for operations. We are developing a very modern system for enterprise crowd management to be integrated fully with our business solutions, with, with our business systems. Arms will be going smoothly from the very beginning to the very end uh, for accounting in the main system. Plenty of other changes in organizations for transaction, uh, for, for operations. IE operations come out of a silo and are very closely attached to business, to one and to another, and multi-scaling element is there, i.e. employees can take measures in individual uh, areas, which is especially important where there is a peak that we need to do for apps towards the end of the month most traditionally. And there is this final element to it that is uh, furthering robotization and AI-related solutions. This is something that we need to bolster by, um, by the implementation of around 15 new robots and IT-related solutions to be seen every single year. Good morning, everyone. In the context of the digitalization of the banking business, data is a key topic. We have been doing a lot over the last years, and we get positive results. In the new plan, we are going to accelerate. We are going to leverage on customers' intelligence and real-time data analytics in CRM. Our goals are quite clear. We want to increase the level of cost sell, want to upsell, and we want to be more effective in the customer's retention. To do so, our target is to use more than 200 data use cases by 2025. We are going to implement modern hybrid architecture for data repository based on big data and relational database component built with cloud-ready technologies. Our AI lab will deliver dedicated centralized environment to simplify AI model development and operationalization. We were already well disciplined in terms of data management. We'll keep this discipline and we'll become stronger with a specific focus on data quality monitoring and data cleansing. Last but not least, we have to keep in mind that we changed a lot over the last years. So we have to simplify our data architecture. One example, one data is one financial system. What does it mean go beyond for data? 
We are going to leverage data and AI for machine learning processes and automation. Kajik spoke about this topic. We want to get a modern data hub with data analytics built on a strong operation and data management fundamentals. And one important topic, we are working for our customers. So we have to implement ethical and legal standards for our customers, data analytics and AI. Stronger also means that we have to keep on ensuring safe and optimal capital position. It's a crucial topic. While allowing the bank to grow and to invest. On top, our intention is to pay out up to 50% of the net result by 2025. It's an important change, an important target. We want to build a sustainable and attractive model for our shareholders uh, to ensure the capacity to increase the level of free float. In terms of financing, I would say that our financing will stay diversified based mainly on institutional and individual uh, deposit, supplemented with innovating and green financing. As for capital, what does it mean going beyond? Over two last years, we have developed an ethical information on capital consumption and product profitability. It was quite interesting, quite challenging, but we did it. Now we want to translate this analytics into decision and process improvement. Capital management is closing the pillar stronger. I know I'm giving the floor to my colleagues, Pshamek and Vova, for the pillar up. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, we've seen Stronger and together it's time for Up now. So we're moving towards the branches. It's all about growth. And this is what we're going to talk about with my dear colleagues, starting with retail customers, because in Up we're talking about having more happy customers using our products. And above all, in the omni-channel world, using uh, cutting-edge solutions. There is a lot of talk about uh, client uh, centrism, digitization. All the leading institutions uh, have been talking about this. Startups, fintechs were created, focusing precisely on these two areas. But importantly, we want to show you that in the beyond format, we are beyond copying, um, following uh, the steps of our competitors. Instead, we're going to combine the best elements in those areas. Let's start with excellence in serving our customers. This is key to our strategy, beyond strategy. There has been talk about being local on the one hand, and showing that we are close to our environment in the small towns where we have a lot of branches still, and on the other hand, using the umbrella of the biggest international group in the Euro area. That's number one. Number two is omni-channel approach. This is no novelty for startups and fintechs. Many among you have experience in this area and know that when you're trying to have a meeting or a phone call in these difficult uh, times, it's very difficult to reach anybody on the other end. In our case, and talking about digitization on the one hand, that is remote process that we are creating, and uh, kind people in contact centers and in branches on the other hand, in these difficult times when customers need solutions and advice, are at the disposal of those customers. And the third element of beyond is 
It's about being beyond the time horizon. We want to focus on providing services across a long generations. That is, uh, starting with the teenager opening their uh, their first bank account uh, till uh, the uh, elderly pensioner who. Uh, um, picks up their requ uh, retirement uh, uh, at the bank. We want to be top one of the top three in 2025 uh, among the banks recommended in by customers in the market now. How are we going to acquire those uh, customers? Vava? In development of our products and processes, we are inspired by our customers. Our customers are putting <coughs> in first priority, digital channels in their consumption or in their usage of services. That's why we will put on the first place in our investments into development of the products and processes, development of digital processes and products. And we will do it for the bank and we will do it for our partners. We will work on personalization, simplification of our products and processes and we will make them available to our customers in one click. Simple for the customer means technologically advanced for the bank. That's why we will work on the improvement of our knowledge, skills, technical capabilities in treatment of data, data of the bank, and also data which are available for us thanks to open banking. Uh, we will continue to work on development of our skills in digitalization and robotization. We will go beyond usual banking. Through organization of the specific platforms which will focus on specific needs of our customers, like mobility or housing. And we will do it in cooperation with our partners inside and outside of the group. All of that will help us to grow our customer base to the level of 4.5 million individual customers and major part of the net increase will go through the digital developments. We will continue to onboard our existing customer base into the digital. We will acquire new customers through digital channels, through the digital relationships. And we hope that more than 50% of our sales will be done thanks to this digital channels and digital products. We will also promote responsible and sustainable consumption. We will support our customers and partners. We will support them in education, in giving advice, in providing specific financial services. And we will go beyond usual banking through creation of eco processes through helping of our customers to transform in a green way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Vova. Although we sometimes speak different languages, we come from different countries. As you see, we have a joint goal in our strategy. And indeed, you have seen what numbers we're talking about and what scale of clients we are talking about uh, in terms of retail clients. Micro customers are very often uh, those same ones that have uh, their uh, individual um, uh, account in one pocket and their uh, micro clients business business clients account in their second pocket. And this kind of uh, business partner in for those small enterprises at an early stage, that's what we want to be, a partner for them. Talked about by Jean-Charles and uh, Vova, the, the, this is the area of data. Our micro clients, micro business clients, vote with their feet by using uh, by choosing particular products, and that's the, the the kind of products we want to develop also beyond our bank, from outside of our bank, by creating a digitized offer above our all in loans in the first place. The second part of the picture is effective inviting these clients to use our not only banking products, standard banking products, but also beyond that natural environment, that natural offer of a bank because these 
customers require uh, all kinds of support, accounting, uh, creation of reports, e-commerce support, etc. And this is definitely the area that will mean a growth in the digitization of these clients, much more, uh, much more so even than uh, effective innovation. We are also very strong in food and agro department. This is why Bartosz Urbaniak will talk about that in detail. Hello, Food and Agro is an area in which we are number one, and we have been for a number of years. It's part, it's part of the DNA of the bank. But it's important to know that the best years have been the recent years, and the best single year was last year. So the question is what our goals are for the years to come. We would like to keep the role of the leader and strengthen it. We want to be number one for the for this industry, we want the, to be the bank that supports changes in this sector. How do we do that? Well, through knowledge. Knowledge has been our advantage in the recent years, and we believe that it will continue to be uh, this uh, number one advantage. Supporting us is number one. Why knowledge? Well, there are a lot of big challenges before uh, our industry. Without these changes in the food and agro, we cannot win the fight for a better climate. And this shows that the involvement of this industry is absolutely crucial to improve the value, the quality of the area and earth and the environment around us, which is also very important in the context of reconstruction uh, post-war. These are partly new challenges, partly surprising, but we are the ones who know to, how to use the knowledge. We have the knowledge and we can put it to work and we can cooperate with those that want to partner with us in making the world a better place to live. We want to have a strong leader's role supporting change. We want to use this, uh, this knowledge, uh, um, uh, put par parameters on it and digitize it so that it's easy to use and available for our employees and so that it uh, is very fruitful in terms of uh, particular effects. And the last element of this strategy is uh, bolstering digitization of our relationship uh, with uh, clients. Um, our portal um, uh, providing knowledge about the agro industry is one of the most popular in the market. We want to be a source of trust, a place where trust is built. We want to have a strong traditional brand in the changing world. That's what we want to be and do in agro, a place where um, cutting edge technologies and tradition are combined. We as uh, BNP Paribas have a unique competitive edge. We are part of BNP Paribas Group. We are present in 28 countries in Europe and 65 in the world. In Europe, we have the largest corporate client base far ahead of any competitor here in this market. And we are leveraging on this in order, let's say, to develop our business with the Polish subsidiaries of our clients coming from Europe and beyond. We have organized ourselves with dedicated relationship managers, simplified processes. What we want is that our clients, when they do business in Poland, feel at home like they feel in their home country. Precisely. Both Bartek and Andre talked to you about what we want to do, what kind of client, customer we want to focus, what our competitive edges are. And I'll tell you how we want to achieve that and what's important for us from the point of view of delivering certain things. Number one is very important for our clients, that is digitization of services. And this is where we build on uh, uh, electronic banking. This process has been ongoing since last year. Module by module, we are handing over to our clients 
um, the elements of our system. This autumn, we're planning on completing this process, and I believe that this will result in a significant increase in the quality of um, client experience in using the system. What follows? And importantly, we want in the e-banking system, we want to offer services and clients so that the access, particularly for our SMEs and corporations, is uh, simple and attractive. Plus, we work based on ecosystems. Electronic banking is one of such ecosystems, but the other ecosystem is the client ecosystem where we have significant competitive advantage because we have unique competencies of uh, risk assessment for uh, international corporate clients and for local companies as well. And we can work on this link between provider, supplier, and receiver. And like Bartek said, we are number one in agro. So what we want to do is increase our share in food processing. Because in food producers, we are definite number one. But not only. As you know, the, the color of the bank, the color of our logo is green. And the, obviously, what we want to do in the next future is to have our balance sheet and our loan book even greener than it is now. We have as well organized ourselves with a setup with local expertise in green solutions. We can leverage on the group as well, who is one of the leaders, if not the leader in Europe right now in green solutions. We've been, let's say, the kind of, uh, we've been really able, let's say, to start this green business with the first uh, local green bond uh, for one of our Polish clients. A bit later, we were able, let's say, to, uh, to issue uh, the first inter international green bond for one of our corporate clients as well. And even better, we were able, let's say, to start the first sustainability linked loan uh, in Poland for a client in the logistics sector, but not even in Poland. It was the first sustainability linked loan in this sector in Europe. So we are very proud of it. We need to leverage on this with the expertise of the group as well and leverage on this as well in order, let's say, to grow our business with the large corporate segment, uh, providing CIB solutions, more sophisticated solutions, more tailor-made solutions to those clients as well because we know that we are able, let's say, to make difference uh, in this market uh, in the next years. Andre has focused on big clients, corporations and investment clients. But really, in order to talk about greening um, our loan portfolio, we need a uh, an efficient portfolio a credit an efficient pr uh, credit process in autumn we modernized our system and uh, since late autumn it's been uh, operational fully we have a rate of improvement which allows for following up uh, on incremental improvements uh, in ongoing periods, subsequent periods, and we're going to uh, shrink that um, pr process by uh, a significant percent uh, this year and in 2025. We want to be one of the top three processes in the market. That's our ambitious goal that we want to achieve, and we believe that the uh, loan process as one of the key elements uh, is per particularly important in um, our business, but also it impacts pricing so that it becomes a gateway for efficient and um, satisfying cross-selling of services that we have under the BNP Paribas umbrella in Poland. And this leads me to yet one other area that is of particular importance. We said what we want to achieve, how we want to achieve this with tools and processes, but SME and corporate banking would not uh, be there if it weren't for people. This work with people on people is of particular importance in this area because we are strong believers in providing tailor-made solutions for our clients. 
with the total support of digitization, uh, technology, etc. And people are the differentiating factor in the whole picture. So now, Przemek Gdański and Wojtek Jambowski. Sustainable funding strategy and sustainable banking. This is going to be based on four pillars. We'd like to support our customers in their sustainable transition, ensuring them a wide access to dedicated solutions. We'd like to support products to be uh, playing a positive role on the environment. We'd like to be funding renewables and energy efficiency. We'll be a promoter of e-mobility, uh, green loans and green bonds. Second pillar will be all about introducing highest possible standards when it comes to ESG risk uh, management. This is also there to mitigate ESG risk within um, activities to be taken by our customers. And thirdly, it will be uh, carbon tracing and abating carbon uh, in our portfolio, banking portfolio. To these ends, we have developed a competence center. This competence center is set to cooperate with our uh, customers, uh, supporting them for green transition by 2025. We'd like to have a full change of our portfolio structure so that sustainable funding uh, rise from 4.5 to 10 percent. At the same time, an annual issuance of green bonds to be dedicated to our customers shall be at 500 million PLNNs uh, per annum by 2025. The share of uh, sustainable assets of our customers to be managed by our bank should go from five to um, 30%. ESG, ladies and gentlemen, is not about not only about green, it is also something entailing responsibilities in many dimensions. It, it's about being inclusive, being transparent, being accessible um, regardless of any limitations or restrictions that there might be of what a given an individual customer can expect of us. We've got our strategic goals uh, whereby uh, at least half of our branches are certified as objects without limitations or barriers. Our customers can communicate um, via sign language in our branches. We we are hopefully in, uh, catering for the needs of those in need um, in terms of the whole organization. And uh, we also act more locally in uh, respective communities, where, where, wherever we are active. We try our utmost to simplify our communications, but it has to be humane in the first place, without asterisks, without complicated phrases, without this uh, rumbling. We need our customers to uh, fully understand what we talk about and what they eventually are to sign. We have developed uh, the organization that will support our measures taken for sustainable uh, development. We've got a sustainability officer, Jarek Krot, has uh, taken over it. He should be here in my stead, but he's un unfortunately out of office today. We've got this centralized entity uh, to an end, but to another entity it does operate through without a, a network of 100 uh, sustainable development ambassadors in our um, in our organization this sustainable approach in uh, in sync with as uh, sustainable development goals is something that permeates down to all of our branches and is embedded eventually within our dna that's the only way we may develop we may develop fast but sustainably at the same time Wojtek, thank you Ladies and gentlemen, now we are slowly bringing our presentation to a close. This is this will be followed by a Q&A. This strategy, let me stress this, has been a concerted effort, featuring more than 200 
colleagues. We've had a number of discussions, debates. Uh, we've had a working dialogue with our strategic uh, shareholder. We've masterminded 18 initiatives, and most of them are now being rolled out. And I'll address it a bit later, too. A big thank you to all of you, my dear colleagues, uh, to all of you who've uh, had their proper share in developing this strategy. We haven't taken advantage of external consultants, and therefore we feel the strategy is, as said, ours. This hasn't been imposed from the outside. We have authored it uh, on our own. Our strategy is in sync with the BNP Paribas Group uh, to have been announced in February this year. This strategy is called, in abbreviated terms, GTS. Very much so about sustainable development, technology, and uh, sustainability, as said. So these strategies are compatible one with the other. We rejoice at how we look at these strategic terms. We see it all eye to eye. We have developed a total of 18 strategic initiatives. These strategies are either rolled out or to be rolled out. Some, um, as this agility strategy featuring 1,300 people, uh, for us to smile, maybe agile transformation is stopped here. We'll be following this model closely to see how it affects the other operations in the bank. We'll have culture, other topics, structure, supporting structure, auxiliary structure for sustainable development. In the appendices, you'll find all the details regarding initiatives. I'm not going to uh, dive deep in it. Instead, let me just tell you who we are, who we want to be, but, but we also know how to do it, which path to pursue. We believe we've got a phenomenal team, management team. We've got cream of the cream in terms of people. We can I'm high with our strategy. Finishing off four pillars and a tree would symbolize it together stronger up as well as positive. There is a number of uh, KPIs that do come here to represent uh, a dynamic growth of our bank on one hand and on the other hand it, uh, all, all, it is also evocative of how sustainable we want to be in this respect. As said, we trust in absolute terms that these are right directions for us to grow. Times are far from certain, though, therefore we might uh, want to modify certain of those uh, conditions uh, en route with conditions changing, some pertaining to quality, our social engagement, our share in sustainable funding. These are I believe, modern bond to stay. The same holds true for KPIs related to technological transition, as well as us going digital. As said, we trust this strategy is good. This strategy should be our guide throughout the coming years. We'll settle on it. It's hugely aspirational, we know it, especially under the current conditions. But with these people on board, we know we'll climb fast, responsibly taking care of the world and that we live in, and hopefully we will change the face of this world for a better one. And soon we'll be back for a QA. And welcome back after this brief break. You can ask questions in different channels. 
I, via video, in a voice channel, live, we've got some questions that have streamed in via chat. But would you be willing to ask uh, questions via chat? Do so at any time. Michał Kolarski, new strategy is based primarily on the organic growth. Do you also consider, aside from it, new acquisitions, especially given the fact that uh, other acquisitions have been very successful? I'm grateful for uh, that you've acknowledged our previous acquisitions. These have been uh, far from easy and with masterminded uh, um, the art of uh, acquisitions, but we do not focus any new acquisitions. Uh, we don't exclude, though, we may want to buy some smaller uh, entity of a select business model, Autenti, to give you an example. But this is going to be more opportunistic, so to say, a far more uh, small, uh, far smaller scale uh, enterprise vis-a-vis -vis to what we have been doing in the past and will be developing organically in the first place. Konrad Krasutski, two questions. In light of what, what the CEO said, namely, the industry will have to live with the uh, SHP problem. Uh, do you think the risk uh, of the growing VIBOR and uh, lawsuits on the part of the customers may be a major topic in the uh, in the future? Maybe this is why BNP is uh, um, increasing interest rate of uh, deposits so that costs uh, between deposits and credits uh, do not deviate too much. We'll have this uh, the same level for 10 years as regards the interest rates. What's changed in this respect? I'll touch on it and then Przemek will uh, pick up on it, especially in the area of these 10-year um, firm interest credits. That's a difficult question, a political one, slightly. And we are speaking of the free market economy. Should, in this context, uh, uh, financial institutions be wary of lawsuits of their customers who were aware um, when they were taking their loans uh, based on um, changing interest rates? The bank informed the clients about it, showing them different scenarios concerning costs of the uh, credit operations. I believe it is a rhetoric question. Shouldn't this kind of uh, risk be eliminated 100% uh, up to this level? Rather not. But the bank offers uh, mortgage loans for a firm interest rate for five-year period and will be doing so uh, for 10-year period. And this is uh, also a vehicle to mitigate risk. Can we, can we see this question again? Uh, the second part of this question was whether, whether this increase in, um, uh, in interest rate is also somewhat uh, linked to it. The, difference between interest rate on credits as VIBOR grows on the one hand and on the one hand uh, deposits, interest rates, this difference was huge, the gap was huge, therefore uh, with time this gap is going to change as interest rate uh, rates um, change uh, for um, saving accounts or uh, um, fixed um, uh, deposits. 10-year loans, would you like to dwell on it? Is some at your disposal in this respect? I'll try to be precise in addressing this question. Banks have been saying, have been maintaining such products are um, a no-goer. We were not among such banks. We not only say it's possible, we do it. Interest rates have been increased in the first place. In the second place, clients have acted accordingly. That is, they used uh, five-year period interest rates, which have been a market standard. Looking at how our clients behave, uh, we naturally add up 
products to reply to it and that are linked with uh, increased interest rates in the first place. And secondly, we also um, respond to the needs of the clients. Our uh, our fixed rate for five years is the same as the one for 10 years. And this is ultimately a client who decides. They have a real impact as they decide uh, what to do. And uh, this is, at the end of the day, our responsibility to provide them with an appropriate array of services for them to use. Kamil Stolarski, is the bank going to change the core IT system? As said beforehand, within IT at upscale, uh, we we need to we will have an in-depth transformation of the IT system. We won't replace it uh, within the next four years. We'll prepare it for the future, so to say. The replacement from the uh, third generation to the third generation does not uh, bring much other value um, to it. We'd like to have a modular structure instead in place. Should there be the integration uh, in the cloud for the fourth generation of core banking, we'll be ready for it. So soon we'll be having an in-depth transformation instead of freezing the whole system as such. Kamil Stolarski. What's their bank capex in 2022-2025 vis-à-vis and the level of the previous years? Slightly lower compared to the previous plan. We have to keep in mind that over the last years, we have to uh, address two mergers for which we invest a lot in IT. We also invest a lot uh, in real estate uh, to raise up the network. It's not going to occur anymore. Uh, so it means that overall, when you are comparing uh, the previous plan with the new one, the level of investment will be uh, slightly lower based on the current assumption. Perhaps there will be some live questions. Can we have some? Marta Czajkowska Bautega. Looking at macro assumptions and the normalization of the um, interest rates at the level of 25 to 3%, this cost restructuring should be important for, uh, for ROE goals. What's the potential of the bank in this respect? And what are initiatives that you are planning on to have in this respect in um, how the branch network of the bank is, is set to change by 2025? And what's being the split between CAPEX and OPEX in the investment budget of IT is dividend to be paid be before 2025? I believe this is a team work that we need to invest in answering this question. I can be the first one to uh, answer as regards the split CAPEX OPEX for IT investments. A reminder, uh, 1.5 billion, 1.2 uh, CAPEX and the rest is OPEX. So when it comes to this striving for uh, cost restructuring. This is not going to happen in classical terms. However, what we are planning on to have is to um, boost the level of efficiency through streamlining and automating internal processes above all, which will naturally um, impact over the savings levels. But this is not to address something that uh, the person asking questions had in mind. As for the dividend to be paid between uh, before 2025, what we declare here is to pay off uh, the dividend uh, of the 50 percent of uh, profit uh, for 2020, 2025. Uh, should it uh, should it be real, uh, we'll do it to pay it beforehand. Uh, what will the branches network change by 2025? Let me stress one thing. It will change primarily in quality terms for quantity. And this is something that we've already had in 2018, 2020. We had been a bank that was responsible for 30% of reduction of, uh, uh, of branches uh, within the whole domestic banking sector. 
in recent years, though uh, we have been more, mm, we have been acting on an individual basis, uh, taking into consideration the situation in our uh, regions and local communities. Uh, we go digital and we are uh, very much ahead the market and uh, banking market dynamics. Uh, efficiency also grows more than tenfold, and this is uh, something that boils down to our omnichannel model. We simplify a lot, and let me remind you, we are the second largest network uh, um, cashless of cashless banking. So simplification, concentration of advisory in branches is something uh, that will be uh, decisive for uh, in the period uh, by 2025, not just uh, changing the mere number of branches, but branches will be also made um, adapted to the needs of our customers. Another question from Kamil Stolarski. Recently, a C2RA show um, was measured at 40% in uh, general and Polish banks. Why in BNP Paribas it's below 40? Let me start. Jean-Charles might um, add something to what I say. Above all, ladies and gentlemen, we, as a product of many mergers and acquisitions and integrations, have to continue investing heavily in our IT infrastructure, which was said quite openly during the uh, presentation, a deep transformation of the core system is the process uh, through which many of our competitors do not have to go. We have many branches, including in small towns, servicing to a large extent our traditional clients from the agricultural industry. They are valuable clients for us and we are not going to leave them out in the cold. But this segment of clients is not as revenue generating as city-based ones or institutional clients. So on the revenue side, we have a certain deficit stemming from the particular structure of our portfolio. And finally, our cost-income ratio is higher than in our key competitors. And uh, we've uh, been living with this uh, for a number of quarters, so going below 48% uh, will be quite an effort. We're going to work on this both on the revenue side by rebuilding our structure of uh, customer base, uh, working on cross-selling, and on the cost side. I believe that our strongly diversified business model means that our cost to income ratio will be slightly higher than in some of our competitors and we are okay with that. Of course, we're going to work on our efficiency, we're going to automate, digitize, which will impact the ratio positively, but it's not really an absolute key factor of success for us. Jean-Charles? You have a uh, few information. No, no, I'm not going to correct to make what, what you said. No, it, it's totally right. The top, you're totally right. The topic is uh, we have to keep in mind what was the starting point as a uh, stated by Pshamek. So if we, we uh, remember 2016, so not a long time ago, uh, our bank was, was at the level of 71% cost income ratio and our competitor were already at 45, 47. We successfully uh, reduced the gap with the competition, but we have to still, uh, we have to still work on a few, do few areas, which had been mentioned uh, by Pshamek and our colleagues. So the efficiency of processes, uh, we are working on improving the level of cross sell, uh, upsell, all the topics uh, we, we have been addressing, we are addressing, and which is explaining the positive trend over the last year. So the goal is to converge, uh, and uh, 48, these are the figures we are assuming at this stage, and we are keeping on, and we will keep on changing the model of the bank. Thank you. One more question from Kamil Stolarski. The strategy doesn't define any goals in terms of business outside the um, banking uh, sector. What are their biggest hopes about? Let me say very briefly and then hand over to Denis to continue. 
we do not have specific goals in terms of the ideas that we already have in place that are beyond banking or outside banking, and particularly those that we don't yet have in as ideas and we believe we're going to come up with in the years to come. Because it's an area where innovation can uh, emerge at any given moment in time. So that's all on my part, Denis. Yes. <clears throat> um, Yes, it's included in our execution. Um, right now in the Agile landscape, for example, we have set up one tribe that we name Open Banking, and it's one of the biggest tribe in terms of investments to accelerate on the execution to go beyond banking. You ask on which topic we focus. These days we have two priorities. It's e-commerce ecosystem. And the second one is to develop the API marketplace to be able to connect our plugs with the innovation ecosystem. And in parallel, we develop the innovation ecosystem. So we onboard fintech in finding solution with us. And also we have launched a specific offer for innovative companies to bank the innovative companies and to be sure that we have in an environment that will help us to go beyond banking. But by definition, not everything is planned. We focus on execution. Thank you. And the last question. What are BNP Paribas experience with the processing of uh, the cloud by KNF, the supervisor, and is it and the requirements, and is it not paralyzing new ideas? Well, we have the same challenges as other banks have, so the regulators' um, position is really very severe, and we are working on be aligned with the requirements of the regulator and the bank law on the one hand, and on the other hand, propose some solutions that are possible. This is a process. Our lawyers are working on it. We are carrying out all kinds of consultant consultations uh, with other banks, uh, with the sector, and we hope that in the next three years, uh, the use of the public cloud will accelerate uh, significantly. Let me add on top of that uh, that uh, we are hopeful and almost certain that the regulator regulator's position will evolve as time passes, because an investment in uh, the cloud in Poland by key players, supported also by the national cloud. All that was done in the hopes that the financial sector would be a big user of uh, uh, that cloud. So I'm rather convinced that uh, um, as a result of discussions, the uh, regulators and banks' uh, positions will uh, uh, be ever closer to one another. Which of the strategic goals, financial or non-financial, is the, a big, the biggest challenge for the bank? One, that might be the most difficult to uh, achieve in the horizon of the strategy. Wow, that's a very good question, and I think we should have answered it beforehand, in fact. Um, let me give you a philosophical answer. Only the future to come will show uh, which one is the m toughest to achieve. Time will tell. Maybe ROE at around 12% will be very difficult because the market will be uh, under the impact of the geopolitical situation. It's also possible that the goals will be upgraded upwards as a result of a positive development of the geopolitical situation. I'd say that for us in the recent years, the big challenge has been the reconstruction of internal processes. Within the organization, we have a very strong thinking about a client focus that all of our activities are subdued to. And now it is time to go through an internal transition, which is, of course, much less spectacular. And it's more difficult to demonstrate the impact of that on our profitability or increase of revenue. So that might be a challenge, but in the form of you know bringing up 
the energy that's necessary for um, bringing about that change that was also necessary in creating uh, the change that was required by our customers. That was the last question because we have run over a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, if you are still in front of the screens, we would like to thank you. I would like to thank you on behalf of the whole team. Thank you very much for your comments and questions. We are happy to take them. Please keep your fingers crossed for our strategy and we'll do our best to deliver on it. Thank you.